For more on the lunar landing, my colleague Asi Inandar spoke to Keith Cowling. He's a former rocket scientist and he's editor of NASAWatch.com. She asked him about the importance of this mission. Well, it's a big deal because it's very complicated and there are only a third country to ever attempt or even accomplish this. But moreover, it, it also gives them a chance to study and develop the way that you would eventually put humans on the moon. As a matter of fact, everything that this spacecraft just did, you would probably require for the eventual goal, as China has stated, of landing humans on the moon. So it's a good way to practice and understand how to do things and how not to do things. What can we expect uh, the next few days? Obviously, they're going to be collecting samples, but walk us through this process. Well, they, once the spacecraft is certified to be functional, which apparently it is, there is a drill that will be deployed that will drill down into the lunar surface up to two meters, and it'll pull a sample back up, which will then be put into a container. And then once that is, is stowed away, of course, there's a lot of photographs and some other studies that are going to be done to the lunar surface, but then the ascender will lift off again, go into lunar orbit, and then dock with the orbiter spacecraft, it will transfer the sample, and then the ascender will separate, and then the uh, service module and the returner will come back to Earth, and as it approaches Earth, the two will separate, and the small return vehicle, which looks much like uh, anything else that's come back to Earth in, in the past, and China has tested this, will land, and inside is the sample. So, again, all these steps are something very similar to what you'd do if you had people on board, except everything would be bigger. It's been more than 40 years since the U.S. and Soviet Union brought back lunar samples. Um, how is this different from that mission? Clearly, in terms of technology, so much has changed. Well, the spacecraft is a lot smarter than anything that uh, the U.S. or the Soviet Union said. It's, it's capable of making its own decisions. But moreover, it's landing in a location in the ocean of storms in a volcanic deposit that will allow a different sort of sample to be taken that will allow scientists around the world, not just in China, but around the world, to understand how long the moon was volcanic, uh, if it still is, and uh, how that has affected the, the nature of the moon itself. And this it really hasn't been studied before, so it's a first scientifically as well as technologically. So this lander is equipped with a camera, a spectrometer, radar, a scoop, and a drill. Keith, do you know if back then, way back when, 40 years ago, if they had the same equipment? Both the U.S. and the Soviet Union did have spectrometer-like instruments. They were far less sophisticated. The ones that uh, I, I'm almost certain that are on uh, the spacecraft are vastly more capable of measuring far more uh, uh, types of data than anything that's ever been sent to the lunar surface before. So that's another first. Um, we're studying the moon with different eyes this time.